So, namaskar. Good evening to everyone, the organizers, respected organizers, and all the trees who participated from different places of the globe. I welcome you all from the place of Lord Janna, who is considered to be the creator and the obeyed by all as the God of the gods. <clears throat> Today, my topic is identification of air pollution and purification with herbal smokes. I am Professor Dilip Kumar Goswami. I am now speaking from Kotak, Orissa, India. Next please, sir. So this is a topic I think very relevant with this modern era. And I am trying to take you to 5,000 years. We come down to the ground without any cause, then we should think that there is something with the air of that area. If a number of persons suffer from cough, sneeze, rhinorrhea, breathing difficulty, and other diseases of the respiratory system, headache, eye diseases, etc. These are indicative of the problems due to air, and we also know the modern science also agree that these diseases are caused due to some pollutants present in the air. Next, please. Next, please. When the pollution of air is detected, Measures should be taken. Previous one, sir. When the pollution of air is detected, measures should be taken promptly to correct in which it, which is the duty of the administration. Even this is considered as the duty of the administration when there will be pollution in the air. Not in not only air, others also, water also. In modern era, a number of chemicals are used for the purpose of fumigation. We have got the experience in the last COVID period, the fumigation with the chemicals, and we know what was the benefit, and we have observed it. Next, please. Ayurvedic classics suggest use of some herbal smokes for air purification. In those days, no chemicals was used, so some herbal smokes, they advised that you burn some uh, herbs in fire, produce smokes, and do the fumigation. Fumigation with the smoke of a number of plants or plant parts is advised. Next, please. So I am showing here some photographs, previous answer, see some photographs of the substances that are advised to use, that is the laksa. Lax. It is used in the houses, in the religious performances in India, and this is said to be air purifier. Like that, the curcuma longa, turmeric, dry turmeric should be burnt into fire, and the smoke should be spreaded in the area. It is said to be very good for air, air purification. Next, please. Uh, yes, uh, the next is the tamalapatra. It is not the, not, uh, known as the malabar leaf, sinamumam tamala. It is also a common available plant in India. I don't know about other places. It is again advised to use, to burn, and to give the smoke, to use the smoke for air purification. Next, please. Again, this is a very common plant in India. This is the Tagora, Sanskrit name is Tagora, Indian valerian. Its dried roots are advised to burn, and even the leaves, dried leaves, can be used to burn and to prepare the smoke and use as for fumigation. Next, please. This is Kushta. The Sanskrit name is Kushta. 
Indian postas tree. These are the roots. Even the barks can be used. It should be dried up, burned. The smoke should be used for air purification. Next, please. This is Priyangu, the Sanskrit name, the Elgesia elignodia. It is a plant, again, available in most of the parts of India. The leaves sometimes can be used. The roots are the best. The roots, the barks, dried barks, and the dried branches can be used to burn. And the smoke should be prepared. And the smoke is to be used for air purification should be spreaded in the places. Next, please. Next, please. And we know that the use of ghee, use of ghee is a tradition of the Indian customs and it, it is also used for air purification. Previously, the different types of uh, fire, fires were burned we by using this creator key and it was considered to be the, the Rokshugna. So it can cause the bacteria, it can cause the, kill the uh, fungus, etc. The Ayurvedic advice for air purification is seem to be superior than the fumigation with the chemical fumigation because herbal smoke has very less chance of causing any adverse effect. Because it is not irritant, the substances when it will be burnt, it will produce a very good smell and it will not cause the irritation of the systems, respiratory tracts, because some quantity will definitely enter through the nostrils into our system. Since it will not cause any irritation, then we can say that it is not harmful. The substances are easily available with low financial involvement in commonly it is abundantly available in the different places, especially in India, all are available, I know, but I don't know about the other places. It can be used easily for both small and large scale air purification purposes. Depending upon the quantity of the substance bound, it will help in purification of the area of the density of the air. So we can use in our personal residences, to purify the air of a village, to purify the air even of a very big area. Next, please. Ayurvedic concept of air pollution and purification should be understood. Again, it is important to study deeply, ex uh, experimented, and all these should be experimented, though I have told that it is not harmful as the chemicals. I think it is not wrong, but it should be experimented scientifically and it should be established and utilized for the purpose of daily purification of air and in the circumstances when any airborne disease will occur in one place. It may prove to be superior than the modern procedures, but for that, multidisciplinary effort, the administrative patronage, and the dedication of the resources is very important. Otherwise, these things cannot be done. For that, the trial should be done, the assessment should be done with the modern instruments, and the assessment should be established. Next, please. <clears throat> so I think, with this, I'm coming to the references. All these things are specially taken from the references are taken from Susruta Sanghita. Next, please. <clears throat> Susruta Sanghita, in the Susruta Sanghita, there is a uh, chapter, there is a section dealing with different types of poisonings. That is the Agada Tantra. And this Agada Tantra branch is dealing with all these things vividly and the vivid description are, are available in the Susruta Sangita in the Kalpasthana when they have discussed about the air pollution in Dushita Vayu. And so I'm coming to the end of my speech. I express my 
thanks to the organizers, especially Rahul ji and my family members, friends, colleagues for their support and inspiration. And I hope this will at least send a message to my colleagues and friends to work in future with the Ayurvedic principles of purification of air. With this, I conclude. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar. Again, namaskar. Hope with a hope to meet you 